Good evening, everyone. Welcome to our Midweek Connect, our very second Midweek Connect. We're glad that you're here. All right. This is uh, kind of give you guys an idea of what we're doing tonight. You've noticed there's a table, and I have a wonderful panel with me, Eleanor, Audrey, and Ryan. Why don't you give them a hand? Uh, so this is one of the things we'll be doing on Midweek Connect, and that is what we call Real Talk. The whole point of this is just getting a topic uh, that's biblical and something that we can have a discussion on. Uh, so it's not just one person teaching, but we kind of have this uh, side to side conversation and we all get to participate and be a part of it. So you may, should have gotten a uh, handout as you came in. Celia, thank you so much for giving those handouts as people walk through the door. Part of our hospitality team. She's amazing. If you, uh, if you need one, make sure you flag her down and she'll hook you up. There we go. I see one over here if you can help Brian out. And then also, if you're watching online and you're in the live session, uh, this is not available on YouTube or Facebook, but if you're watching in the Cypress Grove Fellowship app, uh, if you scroll down towards the bottom uh, of that page, there's a notes button. You just tap on notes and that will pop open the PDF. So if you want a digital copy of that and you're here in person, that's a great way to do it. I just wouldn't do it right now because the audio will probably go off if you open up the, the live app. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm grateful that we're all here tonight. It's going to be an awesome session. And I'm really looking forward to it tonight. We're talking about relationships. Happy Valentine's Day, by the way. Yeah, I, I hope you guys had a, a good one. And if you had a stinky one, I hope it gets better. <laughs> it can only get better from there. So uh, two things I want to let you know about before we start off in prayer. The first one is that we have Mary's Night Out, talking about relationships and marriages and all that stuff. Mary's Night Out is on the 16th. That's coming up this week. So uh, I, there's a few more spots available. So if that's something you'd like to sign up for, make sure you do that in the Cypress Grove Fellowship app. Second thing, everybody say connect groups. Listen, connect groups have come upon us very quickly. Am I right, Turners? Yay, I say unto thee, very quickly. <laughs> so uh, connect groups, we kind of have a condensed uh, startup season this year, but we're starting our group link this upcoming Sunday on the 18th. Group link is just our word for signups. So on the 18th and on the 25th, we're going to have signups after service. Now, if you're already a part of a group, don't worry. You don't have to re-sign up for groups. This is essentially for anyone wanting to switch groups because one didn't work out uh, for their time or for just season of life. But for whatever reason, if you want to change groups or join groups for the first time, you can do that at group link. Am I right on that, Drea? Did I mess anything up? Okay, I just want to make sure I didn't mess up any details. Uh, one thing to be aware of if you are signing up for groups this upcoming Sunday is that uh, because of our two services change, a lot of groups that were on Sundays are most likely not going to be meeting on Sundays anymore. So just keep an eye out on that. If your group change dates and times, uh, make sure you look at that. And if it doesn't work out for you anymore, then you can sign up for a new group. So sound good? 
And then one more thing about groups is that uh, connect group leader orientation. We're doing it on Wednesday nights this year, okay? So the whole point is we don't want to take up an entire weekend for all of our group leaders. We're doing it Wednesday nights here in the sanctuary. For So for next Wednesday and the Wednesday after that, our midweek connect session will all be about groups and getting our group leaders ready. So I think it'll be a good topic. Even if you're not a group leader, I'll think you'll get a lot out of it because groups matter to everyone here at Cypress Grove Fellowship. So with all that being said, did I cover everything, guys? Did I miss anything? Okay, sounds good. Eleanor, I love you. I'm glad you're here. She was so nervous about talking in front of people, but she's going to do great. (laughs) She's wonderful. She's amazing. Business meeting on the 19th. Thank you, Richard. That's why you're here. Uh, on the 19th, give, help me out. It's seven o'clock. Is that the start time? Se- seven o'clock on the 19th here in the sanctuary, our annual business meeting. So we're really looking forward to that. Hey, the Turners just got back from a cruise from, um, they got back from a marriage, marriage cruise. So they actually, uh, help facilitate or I think help that with social or you guys, did, you guys did so much. They can probably talk more about it, but I- I'm glad you guys are back. And what a, what a great night to talk about relationships, right? Let's, uh, let's go ahead and pray, her, and then we'll get started. Sound good? Lord, we love you. We thank you, Jesus, for bringing us together. I pray that you bless all of our relationships here at Cypress Grove Fellowship, God, from marriages uh, to friendships and community. Uh, God, I pray that you help us to uh, dig deep tonight and talk about this subject. We love you and give you praise. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right, I'm going to hand it off to our wonderful Audrey Turner from here. Hi, y'all. I missed all of you so very much. You know how like you get around people and you are thankful that they all love Jesus, you know, like you do, but there is literally no place like being home. So I am beyond happy to be back and see y'all's faces. It's just y'all are special. CGF, I'm telling you, there's nothing like this place. Best place around. So relationships. 101. So my job today, I'm going to be the, I think it's like, a, is it, a, what is it called? Is it, who said it? The, the, what is it? Facilitator. Yeah, the, the facilitator or the commentator or like, I want to be like the news anchor, but not really. Yes. So with us today, no, I'm just kidding. But let's start with introductions. So Pastor Trevor, Sister Eleanor, go ahead and introduce yourself and maybe do this. Tell us how long you've been married, okay. and I'll throw one question in there. What do you love most about being married? Okay. All right, I'm going to go, and then you can have it. Okay. Uh, <laughs> so uh, this will be 10 years for us in October of this year, our 10-year anniversary. So uh, we're excited about that. I think we're going to try to go to where we had our honeymoon back in 2014, so that'll be fun. Uh, what, you, what was my favorite thing about being married? Yeah. What do, you lo- what do you love most about being married? Uh, here's what I love most is how much we've grown together. Mm-hmm. Like Eleanor and I over time, um, I know our just marriage and our relationship has blossomed so much, but we've grown as people. And it's been neat uh, experiencing that growth together. Uh, the, the expectation of marriage you, ha- you have before Marriage is not reality, <laughs> and you learn a lot along the way. So uh, I've appreciated that. Eleanor has helped me grow, and hopefully I've helped her. I don't know. <laughs> um, yes, we've been married for 10 years. Yes. And, um, in October this year. In October. Mm-hmm. And uh, my favorite thing about being married is probably um, I love being able to just talk with Trevor about anything. And... Um, being able to ask him about scripture and things like that, and it be a one-on-one time that we get to talk about those things. And yes, that's one of my favorite times. Thank you. That's why you're here. Hi. Hello. What's What's your name, kind sir? <laughs> Who might you be? Tell us about yourself and why you love being married to me. But that's not your real question. That's not your real question. Your your question is, babe. Tell I them. I better get this right. No, no. Get, no like, <laughs> tell them um, how um, long we've been married. And yes. your question, though, honey, is um, what has marriage taught you about Jesus? Wow. I know. Uh, I'm I thought good I was at this, get the easy this question, one. y'all. I'm good at this. Um, hello, everyone. 
Um, I am so, so, I echo my, my wife's sentiment. Um, I am so thankful to be back home. Um, and I mean home at CGF because, you know, all through the week, yeah, I'm just so grateful. Um, so, yes, Ryan, uh, we have been married. We will, be ha- ha- we will have been married this year, or October 2nd, it will be 18 years for us. Wow. So, I, I know. <laughs> Feel so old. Well, our um, anniversaries are both in October. Yeah. Oh yeah. When's our birthday? So the the question was, what has marriage taught me about Jesus? Uh, man, um, an agape love. Um, it's, it's taught me that that we serve a oh my gosh a just a gracious God that values. Um, just connection with us, right? Of who he partnered up, who he partnered us up with. That connection between us, he made sure to keep that going consistently throughout our lifetime together, because it's the same kind of connection. Um, but yeah, that's kind of how I feel. Like, what is, what has it taught me about Jesus, right? Mm-hmm. That vertical love, that con- that one connection that we have with Him, He, who He partners you up with, He does that on purpose so you can have that vertical love together. And the closer you guys get to each other, the closer you get to Him. So I know that was deep, but that's kind of how I feel about okay. that question. So okay. yeah. Yes. <laughs> so just to give you a heads up of our conversation today, it's, it's relationships one on one. So we're going to take it from two perspectives. So I don't want you to be like, I'm not married. Why am I even here? It's not even like that. It's OK. But it will help you think, A, if you do want to be married, B, if you are married. But we are going to talk about relationships one on one because relationships, both marriage and community, are a gift from God. So when we say community, what do you all, well, for you all, what one word that comes to mind when you think about community? One word, what you got? Fellowship. 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 What else? Family. 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 Yes. Another word for community? Togetherness. Togetherness. Mm. I like that. Anybody on this side? Sharing. Sharing. Oh, I like neighbors. I love that. What about you all? One, what do you think about when you hear community? Mm. Not alone. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. yeah we have mics. We should probably use. We, yeah, you too, <laughs> Pastor. You used to holding it, and you still forgot. Partnership. Partnership. Mm-hmm. So relationships, whether they are your marriage or the community, the family, the friendships, the church family, all of those things, relationships are a gift from God. And if we view them that way, then we will cherish them. And if you view them in the same light, the fact that God wants communion and relationship with us, so of course he wants you to have communication and relationship with other people. So our scripture, um, John chapter 13, verse 34. We can kind of read this one together. It says, a new commitment I give to you, that you love one another just as I have loved you. You are also to love one another, but... By this, all people will know that you are my disciples if you have love one for another. Mm. So if it wasn't important, then Jesus wouldn't have said it. And Mm. if he didn't love us enough to be in relationship with us, Mm -hmm. then he wouldn't have made it a priority for us to have that community. Um, Marriage. Marriage is also a gift from God. What do you think will make people sometimes hesitant about marriage or nervous about marriage? Um, maybe one thing that I think I heard Stephen over here say is sharing, <laughs> and not just uh, not just your stuff, but your life. Yeah. Like you have to you have to share your time, mm-hmm. you have to share your priorities that you have in your life. And so much is shared; it's no longer about you, uh, but it's become uh, about b- the both of you together. Yeah. What about you, too? Uh, I. I, I that's a great one. Um, <laughs> I would also say um, regrets, right? The things that, well, I, maybe some decisions or something that you may have made in your mm. life or what have you that you yeah. regret some of the, the decisions to feel like you're not worthy mm. uh, of, you know, having someone to love you or to spend the rest of their life with you and to take on everything 
that you, you know, may have feel like that you have done to, um, you know, uh, not, yeah, not make that, yeah. not, not be ready or yeah. something like that. So, um, I think the biggest one is failure. And that's something that I feel like a lot more relationships, they're coming from broken homes. And yeah, that, that is a thought that it's yeah. in people's minds. Let's turn to Matthew chapter 19, verse 4 through 6. Pastor, would you like to read that? I Absolutely. Read I would love to. Yeah. There you go. You can read it. He said Matthew, uh, Matthew 19, 4 through 6. Uh, have you not read that he who created them from the beginning made them male and female and said, Therefore a man shall leave his father and his mother and hold fast to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. So they are no longer two but one flesh. That... Uh, what therefore God has joined together, uh, let not man separate. You hear that in the weddings. Yes. Yeah. What are your thoughts on that, Pastor Trevor? Yeah, it's true. You you become one, and so many aspects of your life, uh, and some that you're not even prepared for. <laughs> you know, I think that w what we talked about the aspect of sharing. There's just so much of your life uh, that is no longer uh, just yours. That you experience both pain and joy together yeah. and sometimes out of sync at one point your spouse may be experiencing pain and you're not there at the moment I mean like I, I think of grief that Eleanor has experienced that I was not in that moment of grief at the time but I had to recognize that and there's times when I didn't and that's not necessarily a failure as a husband that's just life sometimes you're out of sync in your emotions and your experiences and so I've had to learn that about, about us is when Eleanor is experiencing an emotion that I'm not. She's in a place that I'm not right now. I need to help her, and I need to somehow find myself reaching that place of emotion that she is in. That's really and sometimes I don't have to fix it. I don't have to resolve it. I don't have to. It's just about being there, yeah. being a hand to hold, a shoulder to lean on, uh, and just being there in the grief and the pain and the struggle. And it's tough, like real life, it's tough to go from where you're at in your mind to where they're at. And it, the, the best way I can describe it, the best, the best advice I have for anybody that's trying to do that, I think this applies to other relationships yeah, too. Just does. with a marriage relationship, it's, you're, you're tied together. <laughs> uh, but when I think about how I've best served our marriage is um, that I've done it it entered those moments with um, a better understanding and a better uh, act of grace yeah. with Eleanor and I is not trying to like uh, figure it out, um, but just say, okay, I need to be gracious. I need to be loving. I need to be kind in this moment, even if I don't feel like it. Uh, I need to do the right thing. So, hope that helps. And how how is it to be on the receiving end of that? Um, so I am an emotional being What? <laughs> That's crazy. at all times, at all times. Um, and so when you're, when you're like that and you grow up like that, there's a lot of times that, um, you are, your emotions, you are taught to kind of push them to the side mm -hmm. and, um, it doesn't work like that in a marriage. Mm -hmm. Um, it's going to make it worse if you just yes, push the emotions to the side. Yes, it's going to make yeah. it worse. Mm -hmm. But um, also yeah. realizing that it is that, I don't know how to describe it, but um, you can see when someone is upset or you can walk back past them and you can feel them shrug or you can, and you know exactly what that person is feeling. Mm -hmm. And it's that opportunity for you to either jump into it mm -hmm or to walk right on past. Yeah. and so Sometimes you may not know exactly what they're feeling. You yes. just know something's wrong. Right. <laughs> yes. right. and, and you don't know if it's you or somebody else did it, but, but you know that <laughs> <laughs> you need to have grace in the situation. Yeah, and I feel like that also goes with our relationships outside of yes. that. Yes. And that God puts us in relationship for us to not be alone right. and for us to go through life together. Right. And so when we notice that someone is just in it, in the right. thick of it, that's our opportunity to stop, check in, 
see how you can be a good neighbor, a good loving neighbor. Right. And yeah, I think, yeah. I love that. I think you guys hit something too that like is so powerful for just our relationships in general. And again, I, I don't want people to tune out because they're hearing a lot of marriage uh, concepts, but fundamentally everything you all said is how we need to be towards each other. Mm. Like when we say, hello, God bless you. That's great, but take the extra two seconds to look at the person's eyes or just to know that they, to know that people have a place. How are you really? Yes, yeah, or either like just allowing that space and that grace and there is, there is a beauty in that. And once you, I've learned, once you've opened that door to where people know that you love them, you care, you're willing to meet them where they are, then they allow you into the mess or they allow you into the situation, and then that's how you become a prayer partner. Mm -hmm. That's how like our morning prayer group gets all these random prayer requests because we know we just allow that space to meet each other right where we are, right. and then there's growth. And in a marriage, it's even better. Like, yeah. it's just, yeah, that's, that's pretty awesome. Great job, y'all. If you look at story after story in the Bible, God never moved quickly. He just, he stopped. It was, he saw the person in the crowd and he stopped. And so our walk with God That's needs so to be yeah, that, so take every opportunity yes. and do that. That's so yeah. good. The woman at the well, he went and sat down and was like, hey, give me something to drink. Mm -hmm. And like, you're right. He took that moment, mm -hmm. changed your whole life. Mm -hmm. The whole trajectory of the, and Pastor Berkey said it all the time. Like my salvation has changed the whole entire trajectory of my life, mm -hmm. my children, my family just because we took that time and we made the decision. Like yeah. that's, come on somebody. Wow. Can I add a little? Please add, <laughs> preach it, Sister Eleanor. Talk to us, honey. Um, so I was, I took Hawthorne to a birthday party on Saturday for one of his friends from school. And um, you don't necessarily want to go to a birthday party for a six year old, <laughs> but you know, you, you do it. And I had Nora with me too. And Trevor had other plans and I was like, preach okay, it. I'm just gonna. <laughs> sit here and look awkwardly at all of the other parents in this room. And um, I made a point to like put my phone away. And every parent in that room was on their phone because they're in an awkward situation. They probably don't want to be there. Um, but it, yeah, just moving slow through that situation. I noticed so many things. And there was a mom that I got to talk to that, she talked about some grief that was happening in her life. And that would have never have happened if we were all just like, hey, we're at Monkey Joe's. <laughs> so Join true. in, yeah. I think um, when we get ready to talk about groups, I want you to talk that, like mm -hmm. slowing down yeah. and paying attention. I think that'd be a really cool segment. Mm -hmm. Come on, somebody, look at that. Yeah. Okay, so let's talk about this. Relationships, dot, 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 four things, mm -hmm. okay? Here's the first one. Babe, you want to take this one? Relationships take, they require work. Mm -hmm. Every single successful relationship has one thing in common. What do you all think that is? And then Ryan will break it down for you. What is one thing that you think every successful relationship has in common? Communication. Communication. What else? Forgiveness. Ooh, forgiveness. Mm. Amen. What else? Showing up. Sh showing up. Who said that? Go ahead on, sister girl. <laughs> Groups, show up, join in, be real. Yes. <laughs> Shameless plug. Anybody else? Walking the oh. I'm about to cry because I know who said that. Oh, Jesus. Oh, yes. One more time. Say it one more time. Uh, walking through the fire together. Walking through the fire together. Mm. Amen. Oh, you go. That emotion hit, girl. You were right. Every relationship, every successful, successful relationship requires one thing. What is it, babe? Intentionality. That's it. Intentionality. Intentionality. You have to choose to show up, choose to walk through fire together. You have to choose to forgive. Yeah. You have to choose those things. So you want to talk to them about intentionality, honey? Yeah. Uh, you know, you have to choose to communicate, right? You have to choose to forgive, as and we heard that. You have to choose to assume positive intent. Um, and, and that's a massive one because not every relationship that you're, that you're in, whether it's you know, a spouse or friends or family, um, even our church family, right? 
assume that everything is a positive intent in your demeanor based on what you, you know, things that you say. Um, Because I love, I love when, you know, sometimes people say, hey, I've been praying for you. The Lord told me to pray for you about this. That's, you know, great. You know, I know growing up, we used to hear that it wasn't always great intent behind it. (laughs) (laughs) And as church people, sometimes it's not always great intent. Like the bless your heart. It's, it is like the bless your heart <laughs> type of bless thing. Heart, but Jesus. assume that, you know what, I'm going to assume the positive intent in that like message. That. And I'm going to be praying as well that our prayers match up together, right? Mm-hmm. Um, you have to choose to set boundaries, right, to, to be intentional behind that. Because if you don't set boundaries, you know, if you're the person that always saying yes, 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 yes to everything, yes, yep, mm-hmm. Right, you're not creating space for yourself. So when you do say no, it's not hit as hard. Like, oh, why you disappointed me like that? Right, you have to set the boundaries. You know, uh, in in any relationship, whether it's you know marriage or in your friendship connections as well. Right, so being intentional is is so important because you know it's more than just a word. Hey, I'm just going to be intentional about a successful relationship. It is an action. It's an action that has to be taken on both sides, right? Even if you don't feel like you're receiving that back, you still be intentional with the relationship no matter what. You know, I love what we always talking about. So one of the things that's my pet peeve um, is when I ask someone, hey, how are you doing? And walk away. I, I, that is, drives me nuts. You know, if you're asking somebody how they're doing, stop. Be intentional in the moment and listen to the receiving end of it. Don't just say, how you doing, and then walk away uh, just to say, hey, and then that's it, right? Be intentional with, correct, you could just say, hi. I know it's awkward, but you can just say, God bless you. That's true. I love that. And then, you know, but, you know, when, when, when asking someone, hey, how's, how's everything going? Listen for the response, right? Be interested in what they're saying. Um, and it's very natural as for all of us to kind of take over the conversation as well. Me too. Let me tell you about what my... Uh, no, be interested in what somebody is saying, not interesting, because you will find that in that moment, it could be something there. And it's an intentional moment, right, that they're having with you that that's them maybe trusting you or maybe lowering their guards to say, Man, that was really cool that he took the or they took the time yeah. to just that, be in the moment with me. And I love what Sister Eleanor said is putting your phones down. I know we're all guilty of that, right? Even I'm guilty of that sometimes being in a room and having the phones out or whatever the case is. But even that, being intentional with that within your space, in the gathering moment, be in the moment because you miss moments, mm-hmm. right? Um, and I know we all are guilty of it by, you know, when we are somewhere eating or somewhere out and everything, we take pictures of our food and everything. That's great. I'm not telling nobody not to take pictures of that. But a lot of times in the moment, you know, we miss something, right? We, we miss a, a, a sequence or a, a opportunity in that particular moment. But um, yeah, intentionality. Can, can I say something about intentionality yes. real quick? Please. Um, something that I heard, and I think this applies most to just like the household, what's happening uh, in your home. So the, this applies to basically if you're living with, with anybody, not just if you're marriage, um, but if you're uh, someone in someone else's household or if you have roommates or whatever. Um, the, the suggestion they had about um, our phones. So the intentionality. So much, so often what's happening on our devices and the screens that are in our pocket is not intentional. Like, think about that. Mm-hmm. How often have you just pulled your phone out, gone to an app, and didn't even realize that you're going into your app? It was just muscle memory, <laughs> right? It's just like what you do whenever there's a uh, dull moment in your life. That, like, that happens in the line at the, at the grocery store. Mm-hmm. It happens at home when you're sitting on the couch or you're laying down uh, for, to, to go to sleep at night. And uh, one way to be intentional with your device is to put your phone to bed. Put your phone to bed. What that means is that your phone has a sleeping spot that is not next to your head. <laughs> it's not, the phone is not next to you. The phone is not in your hand as you fall asleep. I forgot the statistics, but it's kind of ridiculous how, mu- how many of us in our world go to bed with the phone right next to us or in our hand. 
which is wild. So put the phone to bed. Like whatever that time is, go put it in its little, tuck it in. I don't know, whatever you got to do, put on do not disturb. <laughs> and then when you wake up in the morning, uh, don't let the first thing be my phone. Yeah. Let, let the first thing be prayer, yeah. quiet time, yes. brush my teeth because they stank you. You know, like whatever it is, don't just pick up the phone first thing because that's what you naturally, or if that is what you naturally do, be intentional about not doing it anymore because it affects your whole day. It affects your relationships. It affects the people around you. So put your phone to bed. Yeah. That was good. You all dropping some bombs. Ryan, you said be interested, not interesting. Mm -hmm. That a preach. I feel like that should be like a little segment we have too. I'm taking notes for the next two weeks. Um, <laughs> Matthew chapter 5, verse 46 and verse 47, it says, for if, if you love those who love you, <laughs> what reward do you have? Do, you, do not even the tax collectors do the same? And if you greet only your brother, <clears throat> what more are you doing than others? Do not even the Gentiles do the same? Every relationship we have takes work. And the reason why we put the scripture in here is if you can consider, it's easy to love the people that you want to love in that moment. It's easy to love people that you agree with. It's easy to love people who are like you. But what happens if we are intentional in our relationships where we love even when it's hard to love? Mm. Whether that's in the middle of an argument, whether that's in the middle of a conflict in the general relationships, it takes work and intentionality for us to do this right. So how do you all think we can be intentional in our relationships with each other, not just in the phone devices, because we kind of mentioned some of that, mm -hmm. but what are some ways that you think that we could actually apply the scripture to our life? It's not just loving in that moment where it's easy. Everybody's doing that. Okay, whoop de doo Where's your reward in that? But the reward comes in when you can love when it's a little bit more difficult to do so. Mm -hmm. What are y'all thoughts? What do you think? You the pastor, come on. <laughs> I'll let you go, pastor. <laughs> All right. All right, then. Uh, this, this one is difficult because you cannot uh, do it by trying. Loving others that are out, <laughs> loving others that are outside of your uh, circle, outside of your normal people that you actually love. Um, and what I mean by that is uh, just tr doing the effort of saying, okay, I'm going to try hard to be loving. I'm going to, it has to be something that is ingrained into our mind and our body and the spirit that God put on the inside of us. Mm -hmm. That uh, through loving God, through connecting with him in prayer and scripture and him making us people of love, then it comes out in our every, everyday oh, life. Bet. The way I think about it is not just like, okay, I went to the... Um, food bank and I participate in the food bank and that's how I love somebody that I wouldn't normally love. But it comes down to like the reactionary things in your life. That's the hard one. It's easy to go out and say, okay, I'm going to do something loving for somebody outside of my circle today. It's really hard to have a reactionary love of people that make you upset, people that grind your gears. Uh, and, and the first reaction is that you want to retaliate. You want to get back at them. And uh, so applying this scripture is really, really hard. Like Matthew chapter 5, Sermon on the Mount, <laughs> some tough stuff in there. Uh, but what it comes down to is the only way that that will happen for us in our everyday life is if we get Jesus ingrained into every part of us. Yes. And it's going to be sometimes we're going to fail, sometimes we're going to do well. But the, the key thing is that we continue that relationship with him and he makes us people of love. Number two, number two, relationships that focus on the positive last longer than those that don't. Philippians 4 and 8 says, finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on those yeah. things. Yeah. How can we do that? in our relationships. How can we do that, Ryan? What do you think? Um, you know, it, it's, I, I think I said it earlier, assuming positive intent. That's good. That's, the, that's one of the biggest things, right? To focus on the positive things in relationships because any relationship is hard because it takes, it, 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 it takes two, right? You know, um, 
and, and, and I think that especially if you're an extroverted person and someone is, a, is an introvert, you know, it, it takes a lot of patience. It takes a lot of um, a, a, a willingness to, 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 you know, put whatever in and, you know, expect, you know, what you're going to receive on the other end. Um, yeah, that one is, I, I think that's, those are just some nuggets. Those are just some sure. bullets there. To you know, have a lasting positive type of yeah. like mindset when it comes to relationships. What about in marriage specifically, Eleanor? What do you think? Um, I think that it is those. When Trevor and I first got married, we hardly ever saw one another, and it was because our schedules just did not align. And I was working in homes with um, some pretty rough people and children, and um, crazy stuff would happen. Mm -hmm. Crazy, crazy stuff. And I would, uh, what time would I come in? Like nine o'clock? Yeah, something like something that. Something like yeah. that. She, she was working in, in homes with, uh, on behavioral issues yes. with children, yeah. And um, Trevor had been on phones all day. Problem solving is what he was doing, like mm -hmm. from the morning until the evening. Mm -hmm. And, um, the first thing I would do is I would be like, oh, let me just tell you about my day. Like, could you imagine? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> like, just the worst things, and I would just... It was usually blah. very negative, yeah. The, the, yes. the worst of the day would mm -hmm. come up first. That would always be my first. Yeah. And it took a while, but eventually Trevor was like, hey... <laughs> can we talk about something else? And I was like, oh, yeah. Well, I, the, the, way the, the way we approached it is, hey, tell me about the, the best thing yes. that happened today. Tell me about the best yeah. thing. You can tell me about everything else, but start with the best, the best. or the funniest or like the, yes. which there were some funny ones, by the way, <laughs> some stuff that would happen. But yes. tell me about the, 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 the best thing, best yeah. part of your day. And But I think that that's that refocus of before you speak, like if you've had a terrible day, before you speak, Holy Spirit, help me. Yeah. Like Jesus, so help me. Let it's me so let me speak life. Let me speak yes. good things. Don't let me just gripe and complain. Mm -hmm. um, and there's fruit that grows in that, mm -hmm. and um, it makes your husband happier. It makes your children happier. Yes. It makes your best friend happier. Like if you can pull those things out first and talk about them, then just inspiration comes out of that. Yeah. yeah. Um, on the, the, one of the things that they were talking to us about, because you, you made me think about it on the, uh, one of the cruises, and it's actually here too, focusing on the negative all the time mm -hmm. will cause something they refer to as confir confirmation bias. Mm -hmm. And I was like, what in the world is confirmation bias? And basically, confirmation bias is the tendency to seek out and prefer information that supports your pre-existing like, beliefs and thoughts so basically, if you always focus on the negative things, mm -hmm. that is what you're always going to see, mm -hmm. and that's what you are always going to affirm. Mm -hmm. You won't affirm anything else because you're not looking for anything else. Mm -hmm. So it's like when people um, talk about even like church or relationships, if you want to leave, you will find a million reasons to leave. You're going to look for those things that affirm your bias. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But if you take the moment and focus, mm -hmm. and to your point, think about those things that inspire that speak life that bring life that are great yeah. it will shift your perspective mm -hmm. and that relationship whether it's your church relationship your marriage or whatnot it, it'll change it um just to add into that but if you're if you can so easily see that person every day and just jump into that negativity that I, when we first got married that was like one of my thought processes was is this what i'm like in prayer is this what I'm like when I speak to God? And that it really challenged my prayer life mm -hmm. of, of changing habits. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, we'll have an altar call now, everybody. I'm just right? <laughs> Give myself just away. Just be in charge of these moving forward. <laughs> Jeez, oh, peace. Okay, number three. Man. Wow. Re right? Okay, sorry. Relationships require the right type of communication. Dun, 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 dun. Mm -hmm. What is the right type of communication? Godly communication. Mm -hmm. um, 
this is something I think we should just jump right to you all. We got plenty of scriptures in your notes, and I want you all to look at that and study that. But this is one of the things that we were taught to. And it was actually coincidentally, in full transparency, in the ladies' session that we were talking about <laughs> the right form of communication. They didn't talk about it as much in the husband section, but I noticed <laughs> that the ladies got all these lectures about how we communicate, right? And this is one of the things that they talked to us about. It's based off the scripture. Um, I think I took it off. Oh, okay. It's talking about let no um, evil communication or corrupt communication come from your mouth. Use things that edify a minister. You know, they were talking to the wives about that one. Uh, <laughs> but they say, we were talking about speaking truth and love, right? Because that's a form of communication. You sometimes have to say some tough things. Mm. But before speaking in truth, <laughs> ask these three questions. And we both laughed because we were talking about this earlier. I was like, oh, Jesus. Number one, before you say it, you say, God, should I say this? That one right there would preach. Mm. Mm. Number two, when should I say it? And number three, how should I say it? Mm. I hear, I, did I, I, I mean, I hear some husbands and some men saying, my <laughs> God and stuff, you know. <laughs> that I know. That'll we preach. feel the conviction. We feel it. <laughs> so let's talk about this. How do you think our communication and relationships in general would change if before we decided to speak the truth, even in love, we stopped and asked those three questions. God, should I say it? When should I say it? And how should I even say it? Who goes? If you filter everything through those three questions, there is no bias. There is no any other means of communication. If you filter it through, God, should I say this? You know, when should I say it? Because timing is everything, right? Because obviously, if you ask God, God, should I say, it, say this? And if he tells you, yeah, well, when should I say it? If you, it, you know, if you think, well, I guess I should say it now. And then somebody just lost a loved one or something mm -hmm. based on what you're trying to tell them. Mm -hmm. And then how you should say it, you know, it, 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 it won't be received in the way that you think it, it will be received. Yes. Right? So I, I think that if you... <laughs> I, I don't know what else to kind of say because those three questions right now, those three questions, if you ask yourself that, you know, God will give you exactly the, the blueprint and the platform based on these three questions to, um, to initiate, you know, from a place of a godly type of situation. Um, That's good. Yeah. That's good, babe. What do you all think? It, how you say something is so important. So, so important. And you, you know, you brought this as an issue for women, but it, it, the issue for men sometimes is, uh, am I even saying anything? <laughs> am, I, am I communicating when, when I should be? Yes. Um, because I don't feel like communicating right now. Uh, so what is my face saying by not saying anything? You know, what's my body posture when my wife is, is talking with me and, and I should be listening, but it, she's just getting a brick wall, you know, like sometimes I have to remind myself, like, this is your, the love of your life that is talking to you. And she, whether it's uh, exciting to you or not, you should perk up a little bit, like mm -hmm. open your eyeballs a little bit more. Yeah, right? That's right. Right. Come on, man. Like you we can do better yes. sometimes. If we're honest with ourselves, so mm -hmm. I say we're, men are not off the hook on this one. Like, often it's how we, we communicate, we and sh sometimes should we be saying stuff that we're not saying, uh, like loving things to our spouse. That's so good. Um, I, I mean, in relationships and our friendships as well. Sometimes men, you need to tell your friend like, "Thank you for being there. Mm -hmm. I appreciate what what you did for me when you helped me move, mm -hmm. and and I couldn't have done that by myself. I thank you. I appreciate that because mm -hmm. I think our relationships often enough we don't communicate how meaningful they are to us. It's, it's easy so just true. to let it, to take it for granted. So, That's so true. It's so true. Yeah. Mm. And Number four. Oh, go ahead. Oh, so no. sorry. I and that, that big face to right face there. thing. Company. Sorry. <laughs> but um, just, <laughs> <laughs> um, but, uh, Trevor sent me a picture and it was like um, the husband and it was like, um, how was your day? It was fine. And then the other picture was like, um, the wife, how was your day? Mm -hmm. It was fine, but it was like going to all of these other things. Well, 
And so your how you say something does really matter. It's a longer route to yes, get to the it's same a result. Longer route. <laughs> yes. And yeah, I think that that is how God makes us different. Yeah. yeah. I love that. I have to give you a shout out though, because that was some of the things that they were talking about communication and we're learning these things. And um, I, I'm the type of person that I wake up the moment I'm up, I want to be best friends. Mm. Like I'm, <laughs> it, it is 5 a.m. It is 4 a.m. I don't care what time mm. I wake up. I want at that moment Price for sense. us to be best friends friends. So I want to tell you any and everything that can possibly happen in my entire life in that first moment that I wake up. And Ryan's not a morning person to be besties like that. He's just not doing it. But I noticed like he, he's been, he'll say something like, babe, I know you really, really want to talk right now, but I just, I need a couple more hours. And it, instead of for real, <laughs> instead of making me feel like because I was shut down. I'd be like, okay, fine. He don't want to talk about it. So now I have no friends. No one's going to talk to me but Jesus. So then I go in my closet. I'm like, Jesus, let me tell you. Because I can't tell Ryan because he won't wake up. Like, I'm all in my feelings and stuff. And he just, he would be like, babe, just give it a couple hours. So then I noticed he'll say things like towards the end of the day, he'll say, honey, okay, so what, let's talk. What's really going on? And he'll make that moment, to, to your point, Pastor Trevor, like, he made it a priority in that moment. To, he know that I need to have that conversation, that communication, and he's doing that. But it's the same thing in our relationships. It's okay if we can't talk to each other. Girls, I, I know we can't talk at 5 a.m. all the time. <laughs> but to make the time to dedicate to that relationship and then to filter what we say through these things will really be a blessing. I think it boils down to what Pastor Trevor was saying too. Like, like it, it, it's growth, and it has to be growth to understand your your you know, any relationship that you're in to understand, you know, the the, needs, yeah. the other person's needs, yeah. right? And, and I think from that standpoint, the story you just said, it is true. But, you know, 